down now. Um, this is a little coloured cob um, come down from Norfolk Way, I think. This one. I come from all over the country, but this one was, I'm sure it's Norfolk. And she's a real nice, nice little cob, you know, nice natured pony. But still, this is her only second time in single. Been in a pair, but um, second time in single. And just interested in everything around her, you know, she's at that stage. So everything that happens around her, she'd be looking across the fields if she saw a deer, a pheasant. A rabbit, she'd be interested, wouldn't be frightened, but she'd be interested, she'd be looking at it, you know. So, yeah, nice, nice pony, nicely marked, moves nice. Come on, baby, up you go. That's it, just walk now, just walk, just walk. Good girl, just walk on. So, I want to take her steady, I, I, the reason being, one, she's only just in. Um, I would put her in a smaller vehicle than this one. I mean, this one's all right for her. It's not. Uh, there's only me on here, so this it's not over heavy. But um, the other one I've got, she's got two punches. You wouldn't believe. So you know, two on the same side. So I've got to wait to get them, you know, repaired. Come over, darling. Here's the old Thatcher. Ooh. My man, how you doing, baby? All right. <laughs> Good. So that's the old Thatcher there. His daughter does it. You know, it's nice to see that. Is his daughter's uh, learning to be a Thatcher. So, so it goes nice, nice free-moving little pony. But if you look around, you know, just look at what she's about. Her tail's a little bit tight to her quarters. A little bit flat across her quarters. I, I speak from a point where um, I've sat behind a good few horses. So if you learn over them years, you know, on the type of horse it is. The, not that you can categorise them very well, but from the type of nature it's got, etc. Um, and the breed to a certain extent. You can learn a fair bit by well, you can learn everything if you if you you know if you've got the, the time to study it. I'd like another lifetime to get it right. You know, it's, like, it's very easy to say, oh yeah, you know, I'll do a, you know, Barry Hook does a wonderful job and all that. It's it's a case that you know there's so much more to learn, and the man that says he's you know he don't need to learn anymore is a fool, a big fool because you're always learning. I do every day, I, I, I try my hardest to, to understand. Sometimes you can walk up, well I used to, not so much now, you overthink it. You know, you start putting all sorts of scenarios together to make a reason, but that's, that's not how it works. You just got to go with the flow, go more, with me now it's more instinct. It's more, you know, something I'll feel as opposed to any actual point, I can, you know, any fact I can say, you look because of this, this horse is behaving like this. Walk up, walk on, come on, walk on, walk on, come on, walk on, hey, walk on. So there's a cow just moved over there, so straight away his ears go over there to investigate that. And I don't mind how she walks now, really. She can just walk along slowly, that's lovely. We're out, we're learning. She's learning. Every step she takes, I want that to be part of her education, yeah? So whether she takes it fast or slow, she still has the opportunity to learn and accept what I'm asking of her. I never force horse um, or do my very best. Sometimes you have to push them a bit harder. Um, you know, if, if their nature is one of being argumentative, then you've got to exert your authority a little more and and push them on a little bit. Um, but walk up, come on. Well, that's better. Go on. Walk on. Good girl, that's it. 
she's getting it. The other thing she's listening to me, but if you look at that towel there, that's a little bit, let's just straighten this camera, um, it's a little bit tight, I would call it, a little bit tight to her quarters. Just put that camera down like that. Um, I'd like to see it off a little bit. Now you can say, well, she's a cob, cold-blooded horse, and they carry their towels as a general rule lower and tighter than maybe a uh, acne blood horse of some description. But even so, it's a little bit tight um, for me. So it's telling me she's not totally relaxed. But then why should she be when this is, I think, um, I think, it's a third time in, a, yeah, I think it's third time per day in a single. So she's doing very well, you know, it's just walking along. But where she had the other horse up beside her, and the reason I done that, the reason I put, people think I use the other horse to teach the other horse. Well, <laughs> that's, you know, not the reason. 50% of the time, that's not the reason. Sometimes it's a good idea. But they're all individuals, you can't do. But this horse was very heavy. Um, it's all right saying show condition, but show condition is no good for training a horse because obviously they've got to cover the miles. So what they're gonna do is turn the fat they've got on their body to muscle. Um, don't really make much difference to their weight, really. We've got a set of weighing scales for horses and it doesn't make much difference at all because Come on, my darling, that's it. The, you know, muscle's more dense, therefore heavier than the fat on them, and they average out about the same when they're done, but they can look entirely different, you know. But this little girl, she had a big pot belly on her. Um, wasn't due to worms, I thought it might be, but it wasn't, you know, we put a wormer in her just to, what's it? The other thing she's had is a couple of Detramax, um, cause she was itchy a bit in her heels. Now, she's got a lovely bit of feather, but... Oh, hello, mate. Did you get any carrots? Uh, yeah, let me look like a shovel shovel here. Uh, yeah, we're like... So I'll drop you a bag. No, 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 I'll pay for them, mate. I'll, I'll pay for them, gladly. But what, what sort of money they're making? <laughs> All right, my old darling. See you later, mate. I'll you a bag by the OK, mate. God bless. Go on. So that's nice, Van pulls up the side, I have a conversation with the man, that's lovely. I need some carrots. Um, come on baby. Ah, that's my darling. Now I never asked this pony to trot, but the pony's wanting to trot. So just at this early stages, we don't have to be, you know, too strict. And that'll come later, you know, and if she wants to slow up now, then that's fine by me. As long as she keeps moving forward. Just come over, Dolly. Come over, baby child. Come on, my little baby girl. That's it. There's a good girl, you little sugar plum. Oh, mate, on you go. That's it. So, Ree's off, you know, the other trainer, the young trainer I'm bringing on teaching. Um, He's off at the moment, went for a ride on her bike and broke her collarbone. So all the horses we do here that <laughs> can be a bit, you know, of an handful sometimes. But she rides a bike and breaks her collarbone, so there you go. I don't know. So I'm having to do this. <laughs> do you remember I said to you before, just up the road there, a rabbit or a pheasant. Well, there's a rabbit or a pheasant, who might one of the two just moved in that hedge. So she heard it, now she's got her ears pricked sharp looking for it, you know. Is it going to happen again? I think her ears are quite stiff now and what's it. As she goes down, they'll start to relax again, hopefully. Um, and if you say, can ears relax? Oh yeah, definitely they can. If you see horse in a field, for instance, you know, and he's standing, it's a lovely hot summer's day, and uh, oh, winter time doesn't matter when, but uh, say it's a lovely hot summer's day and you'll see that. Come on, my baby, that's lovely. You'll see they're all st standing under a tree in the shade and its ears will just be laid out to the side. It'll be standing on three legs, i.e. resting one of its hind legs. Yeah. Um, it'll have its hip drop down, resting one of its hind legs, and its ears will be 
out like rubber, just sort of like hanging on its head. There's no tension at all in them. Well, when you get all, she's very happy in harness. Um, so she can hear the, the play schools just on the left hand side here. See over there, the play school. And, uh, you know, like the preschool thing where the children go. And she could hear them. And now she's seen some bins. That's all right. No point yet. Let's just get her going up the road. Let her clip clop along. Happy to pull the vehicle. Yeah. So constantly picking up information all the time. See her ears there prick forward. What's this? Now she's been past here. Um, loads of times actually. In a pair. And the reason we put her in a pair is, as I say, because she was very heavy. Now the problem is with that. You know, she was overweight for this job. She was in show condition, or even, you know, a little bit over show condition, what shall we say. So the reason that I put her in a pair was to save her doing the work. So we had it. Hello, how are you? So a little boy there, he's not at school today and he's just called out to me. Um, so I made her start, all but that's fine. But you see the recovery rate there, let's just talk about that for a minute. So a little boy calls out, she's startled by it, but her recovery rate's good. You know, just a little hop and a skip, and she's back just clip clopping along, yeah? I'm not worried about her head not being straight because she's gonna be looking over there, and she'll do that for a while yet, and then eventually she'll settle. Come round my baby child, come round my little sugar. Ah, that's my guilt, ah, that's lovely. So as long as she's moving forward, I'm not using any brake by the way, um, when I slow her up, we're just getting her used to the bridging, pushing against her, steady, she would have had that in a pair, steady baby, steady, she'd have certainly had that in a pair, but she'd have had it, um, walk up babe, that's my darling, it would have been a shared load, and also the other horse that was trained when I asked it, you know, on the reins just to ease back, it would ease back much quicker than this pony, so therefore, because it's more advanced than its training, would know what was required of it when it felt that pressure on the reins, it would pull up very quickly, you know, and, and, and stop, so she wouldn't have done a lot. And also now, she's got the whole load to hold back, you know. Another thing is when you're, you know, you're training these horses, they're all different, you cannot put them I keep saying the same thing, but if you could get a book, you can't read a book and break a horse. Some people had argued the fact, well, I did. Well, lovely, God bless you. But as a general rule, you can't because what books don't do and, and also can't tell you, even if the author understands horses and can read body language and has a genuine understanding, it's very hard to portray that. Uh, in, in, into a picture, into words in a book, you know, it's, you know, look for this, look for that, because you can misinterpret it, you know, so easily, so you can say, well, look at its ears, but then all you need is something that the horse can hear that you can't, and now you can't read anything, because, you know, in the situation you're in, you're waiting to see whether the horse is relaxed, but that could hear something a long way off, and then it's got a terrific sense of smell, and then it's got its eyes right. So you have to learn over a period of time, and it takes quite, it take me a long time anyway, to learn. Um, and even now, as I say, I would like another lifetime to get it right. I'm not saying I've got it right by any means. But nice little mare, just going along happy. As long as she's moving forward, as I say, I don't mind. Come on, my baby. Yes, you are. Ah, it's beautiful. Also, when I'm talking to you, I'm sorry if I, you know, a lot of what I says don't join up properly, as Ray keeps telling me. You know, um, it's because I'm watching the horse and I've got to my first and most important thing to do here is to read this horse and drive it accordingly. Yeah, that's the most important thing I can do. The very most important thing I can do is to 
Oh, it's my job. It's what I'm being paid for. It's to understand this horse and get the best I, I can out of the horse and put the best I can into the horse so it ends up safe, confident and happy. And happy is the most important thing. Because if it's happy, it wants to go to work, wants to enjoy it. Getting back to putting this in a pair, if, if I hadn't have put this, you know, I'd put this pony directly in the vehicle, single, I'm sure the type of little pony this is, its temperament, etc., it would get fed up very quickly. It would find it every going because it's got to take itself up the road. So, so what, what do I mean by that? Well, all right. If you take a barrel load of muck, you've just mucked the horses out, you've got a big, heavy barrel load, and you're overweight yourself, it's hard work. If you're fit, the barrel's not anywhere near the problem that it was when you was unfit. Well, the same applies to horse. So when the horse is unfit, carrying a lot of weight, too much weight, and then you ask it to pull a cart as well, how's it going to enjoy it? People that are fat, and I've been fat myself, not that I'm skinny now, but I was a lot heavier once, and I didn't want to, you know, go for a walk with me dogs or anything like that. Sure, I didn't, because it was, you know, wore me out. It was hard work, you know, going for a walk. There was no pleasure in it. It wouldn't be any, any different for all. So you've got to try and understand that. And also the other thing is, when you're thinking about, you know, the training, and come on, baby, of horses, etc. You've got to keep it simple. And why do I say that? Because horses have a very small brain. And what we ask them to do is, well, it takes a bit of justification. I'm one that does it all the time, but it does take some justification. I mean, how alien is this to this animal to do what we're asking it to do? Obviously, it is, you know. Um, but, if they do it and they're happy to do it and they enjoy it and they're not abused right then they can actually enjoy it so so how do i know they enjoy it well if you've done it right um with horse and you've got them you know enjoying what they've done when you come to put the harness on the next day you can tell when you go to put the harness on oh yeah this is fine They'll put their head down to have the collar put over, you know. Put the harness on. They'll stand there quietly while you put it on. Um, and then you'll see them do things that are like lovely, really, you know, to me anyway. So you put it on and you take the horse outside. He's all harnessed up, got his bridle on. So you bring him out and just hook him on the wall while I get the vehicle. And if you leave them there for a few minutes, you know, or ten minutes or something, they pour the ground, yeah? Saying, come on, let's get on with it. As soon as they feel the cart go on, they stop pouring the ground. So they say, okay, right, we're ready to go. And they enjoy it. Well, that's exactly what I want. I mean, that's exactly what I want. Horse that's happy is a good horse. When it's upset and unhappy, no good. Also, what I would say to you is, all horses in training, you run the risk of making them sore maybe under you know their elbows around that area anywhere really that the harness touches so what we do when they come back they're all pressure washed so we have a hot water pressure washer so we can set the temperature of the water it's gonna be cold if you want it you know on a summer's day they like that but um you can have it cold come on baby or whatever temperature you choose He's a good darling. And into that, uh, we have a, there's a, a compartment on it or, a, or another tank on it that you can fill with whatever you like. So um, we put lime wash in there for mites, you know, so we wash the horse out with soap first, get all the grease and everything out of the coat, and then we spray them with the lime wash. And the lime wash kills all the mites and kills the eggs, kills everything on their legs. Um, so we give them a Detramax and then we, we normally do that within 36 hours. Well, between 24 and 36 hours seems to be the time to do it and you never get any more trouble with mites, you know. So, come on my baby. But also, 
the, the, the chemical we use mostly is something like, I suppose the only way I can describe it, is an antibacterial, antiseptic, um, comes in a, in a gallon can, we buy about 10 at a time. Um, and we add it to, you know, you have to uh, dilute it in the water, and now sprayed over with that. Well, any little marks they've got, um, any tiny little marks they might have, are nipped in the bud straight away. And then what I always do, wherever the harness fits, I'll go over, I've got a, well, one or two things, I'll have a scratch them under the girth, you know, just in front of the withers where the yoke is, all them places where a pressure, a pressure, pressure can be applied, you know, then you can see whether they got any little, well, you don't, you know, it's not impossible to get, like if you, if you don't keep an eye on it, you can get what they call a gall, you know, a sore spot that turns in can be, you know, uh, like a, almost like a boil, if you like, um, you know, it'll go septic and you've got problems. So we always wash them off every time we come back and they're scraped off tight with a rubber or a comb, you know, the metal strip with the teeth in it to pull the coat out as you're scraping them off. That's my darling baby, you good baby. You just walk along there, that nice? Um, so, go on my baby, just got to watch and see what she's watching. You know, I'm, I've got to watch her all the time. I'm trying to talk to you and explain to you what I'm doing because so many people like me to explain um, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. But at the same time, I'm, the first and priority is the horse and, uh, you know, a pony that's happy, you know. And I only learn that by a, the body language coming off it, how the horse is pulling, etc, etc. So, yeah, as, as I say, so we, we spray them over with that. That takes care of all that. Then the other stuff we use, I suppose, I thought, all right, darling. All right, my baby. I know what that is, I'm not concerned about that, it's not really, she ain't got a, you know, a cough or anything, as so she's got a cough, but, so. but the cough's been caused by, <laughs> come over my darling, she was, I had her on the fence earlier, and uh, she chewed the fence a little bit, and I, I know what's happened, I washed her mouth out immediately, yeah? But she's probably got just, you know, maybe scratched her little throat a little bit or whatever. But it's, you know, she's fine. She's happy. I mean, obviously, if it continued to got any worse, we'd have to bet out straight away. So I'm, I'm happy with what we're doing today. I don't want this to be any, any more than this. I could drive her on, of course. I could never step in out and all that nonsense. That will come later. Let her just get used to this vehicle, the feel of everything around her. Let her have a good look around. You know, don't lock her down. So by that I mean, don't try and contain her like that, you know, in a ball where she can't move. It's like children. When you're teaching children, they gotta run and play. They can only hang on to so much knowledge. You know, so much you're putting in before their little heads burst, don't they? So, You've got to let them go outside and let off steam and run and play. So, if she wanted to trot now, you know, she wanted to trot, she wanted to canter, that's fine. She wanted to do whatever she wanted to do, as long as it's, you know, I can control the situation, then perfectly happy to let her do it, yeah. But she's going along here now, just absolutely lovely. Now, what I've done, which is beautiful, that's pleasing. She walks to the edge there, and I'll let the vehicle, I didn't steer her out of it, I'll let the vehicle rub along the hedge, you know, so it's making a noise, she can hear the twigs moving and breaking a couple as we go with the cart, you know, pushed up tight against the edge. She can feel the, the wheel going up onto the bank and rubbing, that's all part of learning. People say, well, why is that part of learning? Because if you don't do that, yeah, Later on, you see these twigs coming up here, for instance. I'll put the cart right on them, you see. And you can hear it all crunching and going. That's good. And it's all got to be in a controlled environment. You've got to know what you're doing, obviously. 
but she gets used to that. So if you've never done that and you kept away from it, one day you might be forced over. She runs along the hedge. It makes an awful noise. That startles her. She starts to get on and, and trot and that, you know, or canter and, and runs away with you. Just to something as silly as that. Now, all of these things, but people say to me, well, can't you write a book on how to do it? I just told you, no one can write a book on how to break horse. And some of the things I've seen in some books are diabolical. You know, pulling things behind it, like when someone, uh, I'm not sure, and I don't want to condemn anybody. As I've said loads of times, people break their own horses and, um, you know, make a lovely job of them. And the, the, I didn't break every horse. There's plenty of them going around doing the, you know, a perfect job without my help. You know, they're doing a good job. So why should, it, you know, I couldn't condemn, come on, darling, that's a baby. I couldn't condemn anybody else. That's it. And I think it's a lovely thing to break your own horse. I think it's lovely. The trouble is, uh, and it's not very nice to say it, but you hear of all the success stories, but you don't hear of the disasters where some poor bloody horses, come round baby, come round my darling, that's as far as we're going today. So I'm going to make her side step now, look, can you see her crossing her feet over? Yeah, look, that's lovely, cross them right over baby, that's my darling. So, there you go baby. So you never hear of those disasters and when I see people pulling a wooden pallet behind all something is ridiculous. So, so stupid. You know, to my way of thinking, there's plenty of them pull the pallet and they're in harness, they're going up the road and they're fine. But when they panic, for whatever reason, I've seen two or three with badly scarred legs. Um, Thank you. Come on, babe. With badly scarred legs, you know, uh, where they've come back on the pallet and they've broken it all up and they've pushed their foot down through it. They tried to get their foot out and they kicked and bucked and upset them for life, you know. It's like, you know, we get a, quite a few of them. And when the people come and they're, you know, you know, I asked them a few questions and that you can soon get to the what's actually happened. And it doesn't bother me, I'll put them right. You know, the more truthful people are with me and say, look, we've done this, I think we got it wrong because this happened. That's lovely. That's absolutely beautiful. You know, that's, that's lovely because then you know where you're coming from. Doesn't mean to say that, that their interpretation of what upset the horse is the truth of what upset the horse because it might have been you know, the actual thing that upset it might have been prior to that, you just don't know. But you can get a good idea, you might not know for certain, but you can get a very good idea of what's what. So, that's lovely, my baby. You go up there now. Now, you'd have to be pretty good to notice, but if we notice now, we can see a shadow forming where the towel is now being lifted away from the quarters can you see look it's being lifted away a little bit yeah that's showing me that she's a little more relaxed she's holding her towel off any horse that's uptight will tuck their towel between their legs basically any any horse that's uptight will do that before they go to kick you will give you both barrels they'll always tuck their towel between their legs um, That's it, my darling. You're a good baby. So there you go. Um, we get, you know, there's lots of people when we put these films up on YouTube, we get a lot of comments, etc. And, you know, we don't mind anyone asking questions or criticising what we do. That's lovely, you know. If you've got a better idea or you've seen it done better, then lovely. That's, we all learn, you know, we only learn by getting it wrong. You don't learn by getting it right all the time, do you? You've got to get it wrong to get it right, if you know what I mean. So I'm always open to learn. And I've learned things off of people that you wouldn't think, that uh, you wouldn't think 
that um, they wouldn't even necessarily know anything about horses, but they come up with ideas, and I'm just amazed sometimes with some people that oh, you wouldn't think were horsemen come up with some brilliant things, you know, for training horses or doing horses or things they do with them. Definitely, there's a lot of things. There's nothing. There's nothing we do sort of behind the scenes or anything like that other than what you see. But what you have to understand is when you're training horse um, and you're putting the harness on for the first time and that sort of thing, we don't have the time. I mean, these films, I mean, this horse will do, well, let's, let's say it does, we'll do a minimum of an hour a day, but let's say it does, it does the hour a day, yeah? Well, it'll do that seven days a week. So there's seven hours, yeah? That'll be 42 hours of filming for the average time all spends with us, yeah? Well, it's more or less 90% of them all spend six weeks to become to the standard that you see on YouTube. Come on, baby. Oh, my darling. Yes, you are, you little rascal. And what I'm going to do in a minute is just stop along the side of this road here. Just get past this. Come up, baby. Come on, darling. Come on, sugar plump. Candy, this pony's called. Nice name for a little pony, little filly. Are we going to ask her here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stand still, darling. So I want her to stand. Now, if you notice, I'm keeping a slight amount of pressure. I am not pulling on the reins. Yeah, and I want her to stand. So when she rests her head, she'll slack the reins herself. Whoa, stand. Yeah, can you see? So she brought her head in. Stand. So I change the tone of my voice then. And tell her, that's what I want you to do. Stand. 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 I want to learn just to stand quiet. Yeah. Now, if you look now, now she's being asked to do something. You can see the towel's gone tighter to the quarters. I don't mean to say she's going to kick back, do anything else, she's not going to do that, but she's just saying, what's going on here? And straight away, it takes a long time to, to learn. It takes me a long time anyway, a long, long time. Whoop! That was lovely. So I never tapped her to go forward or anything. I just said, whoa, and she's done it. So... Now I've got a motor car coming, so I'm going to wait for the motor car to come. Coming behind me, I can hear it. I'll just let it go flying past. One of the fellas just uh, probably got it out on a test or something. Anyway, he's just stalled it then, which is absolutely tip-top beautiful. And the pony's taking no notice at all, so you had that bit of noise coming past, he's had to restart it right next to her. Couldn't ask for more, that's absolutely beautiful. And the other thing that's more important to me, she has not made any decision herself. So by that I mean the vehicle went past, so she'd go, OK, we'll follow that now then. That's what we must have been waiting for. No, she's got to wait until I tell her that she can go. So this one coming this way. Again, absolutely brilliant, lovely. Now, she's learnt that from being in a pair because obviously when we stopped, um, we wouldn't go until I said. So she's, <laughs> she's backing it up now, look. Now, you can't be too harsh with her now, right? There's no need, is there? She's not running backwards. She make one step backwards. She don't really know what I want. The reins are slack. She's not really sure. But she thinks, or oh, I, think, I think Dad wants me to stand here. Well, that's beautiful. That's absolutely lovely. Well, that's better than having a big lump of iron in its mouth and a curb chain and all that nonsense. All he's got is a little tiny bit of soft rubber. Rubber that you can tie in a knot. 
If it was any longer, you could literally tie it in a knot. And that's the, the bits we use. This one's not of our own manufacture. This is uh, another one we're just trialling at the moment to, to see what it's like. So standing there, absolutely brilliant luck. That'll do. So now, change the tone of my voice and just told her off. Same as you would with a child crossing the road. You're holding a child's hand and you go, <laughs> looking at me, look. <laughs> so, saying, come on then, let's go. What are we doing? Again, she's got to listen to me and do what I asked her to do. Not what I forced her to do, but what I asked her to do. That's the way to break horse. So they're happy all the time, you know? Now, she ain't exactly over the moon at the fact we've got to stand here, or she wouldn't pull the ground. She's got a few flies around her bothering her and midges. Got a nice bit of soap in her mouth where she's chewing that old bit, which is lovely. And now I can say to her when we get her attention, walk, come on. That's lovely. Now that, to me, short trip, one of them short trips with a big lesson. Short trip, big lesson. Believe me, that's a lovely, lovely lesson she's learnt there. That's a beautiful lesson. If you can do that and achieve that, that makes my day. As far as this one's concerned, I don't care if we was walking back in the yard right at this minute and, the, you know, her day had been finished, her work, you know, her, her time working, in training would, you know, come to an end right this second, I'll be over the moon. Over the moon. And that's absolutely brilliant. So we had the car. She, you know, backed up a couple of times. She went to move forward. I said, she uh, poured the ground. I chastised and then I, you know, changed her tone of my voice. So if, if you was had a little child holding her hand by the curb and they stepped into the road, you would change the tone of your voice, wouldn't you? Of course you would. And you'd be a little bit, um, that little startle there was a, a road sign laid on its, laid down flat in the grass, you just saw it at the last minute, as that motor car come by. Walk up. So when we get another day like this, you know, another lesson like this, another hour or so like this, then we'll move on. You lovely baby, you good little baby girl, are not you? Yes, you are. And I talk to them a lot now when I first start. And then you'll notice when the films are finished, um, I don't say much to them at all, because it's not required. Um, so I'm going to try and ex... ex Hello, Babel, right? Yeah, I'm good, you're right. How many miles? Uh, well done. Well done. 68 miles she's been on that bike. 68. Blimey. Right, my darling. So, come up. There's my darling. That's my little baby girl. That was nice. That little moor in there just went, made a splash across the water. She didn't take any notice, that's good. And you can have a pony, you know, you can, you can buy a pony, say, like, and they're very quiet and, uh, and sensible, yeah? Um, and happy little things, you know? But, um, but when you start taking them from their, you know, their natural environment, or the, you know, environment where you're going in the field, coming in the stable, having some food, when you start asking them to do something, they can change quite dramatically, you know? So you have to have that voice where you go, no, you'll do as you're told. That'll do. You hear me say that a lot. <laughs> um, and they soon learn. So I'll talk to them a great deal now. You know, um, just nice soft words, like words I call like duvet, you know, like a soft, lovely, you have a shower, a nice sort of shower get into bed in a lovely clean bed nice soft duvet round you snuggle down and go and have a snore lovely well 
that's nice talk, isn't it? That's come on, my baby girl. Yes, you are. You good girl, that type of thing. And then when she does something wrong, I'll change it to broken glass. You know, if you drop a glass in the kitchen and it shatters, everybody freezes. You'd think the glass was going to jump up and bite them, wouldn't you? It's only laid on the floor and it broken. But everybody freezes. So, come on, baby. Come on, my darling. That's it. So I talk to her like that. So when she's now, I wouldn't talk to her like that if this field here the other day, this one here, was full of cattle, yeah? That field there was full of cattle the other day. Well, I wouldn't, if she was a little bit spooky, I wouldn't be shouting at her. That's no good. That's just stupid. Come on. You want to be very, very calm and quiet and just talk to her, yeah? And then soothing voice, you know, and she'll respond to that much better. Now that's that's easy for me to say, and all of them things. It's very, very difficult, um, and takes a long time to perfect that, you know, to get it right, and then to get it right with all different types of horses takes a longer time. And some horses will take. Like they, they far sooner you you give them a clear, precise instruction, and you know a higher, you know a deeper tone voice, and a, okay, walk on when you talk that sort of thing. Another one will be, come my baby girl, yes you are, yes you are my baby, yes you are a good girl. Oh yes you are, like that. But when she poured the ground back there, I was straight on her immediately that'll do that's enough or something like that and I'll change the tone of my voice entirely then as we go on I won't hardly speak to her at all and every the only communication I will have would be a request for her to do what I would like her to do yeah so I try never to tell them what to do well I do tell them what to do but you want it to be more on, a, you know, a softer, you know, approach. You don't want it to be growling and shouting and all that. The other thing is, when people get in the tree, when you think about it, it's so silly. And we're all guilty of it, you know. When I first started with horses, everybody is, you know. It's not, it's not saying that someone's stupid, but it is a stupid thing to do when you sit back afterwards and look. So you've got horses that's got a problem. So he starts to drop his quarters, his tail starts like that, and he starts to go. He's going to run with you, he's going to go. You know he's going to go, you can feel it on the mount, he's going to kick him back, smash your cart to pieces. Something's gone drastically wrong. The first thing we do is scream and shout, whoa, 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 pulling, yanking on its mouth with a big lump of iron in there. No good at all, you won't stop them. But if you have got the nerve, you know, and I'm not telling anybody what to do, I'm telling you what I do. You've got to sit there quiet and you'll see me, some films there of horses throwing in a buck or a kick, um, rearing up on their hind legs. I don't shout and holler. I don't do any good. It just makes the situation worse. And you've got to just sit there quietly and say, OK, my darling, steady now. That's it. Come on. And as you've been training them and you spoke to them that way, soft and gentle, yeah, they'll come back to you. Nine times out of ten, they'll come back to you and they'll listen. Now, that's lovely. If you start screaming and shouting, you're just adding to the problem. You're not soothing the problem. I mean, it's like um, a kiddie's grazed its knee, they're crying their eyes out, they're upset like that. We wouldn't put and go and put vinegar on it, would you? Or salt, <laughs> you know. Well, that's what you're doing when you're holler and shout. So you put something soothing on, something that, you know, takes the soreness away and that's what you've got to do with your voice. Come on baby, because that's how we communicate with them, it? Through the voice and the reins, yeah? I don't use whips. I have to, it's, that's a lie actually, I do use a whip, but I have to because obviously if horse is going in the show ring and you're going round and you get someone come past you and swish a whip, they've got to know what that sounds like. Um, and also, I always tap them up the quarters with a whip now so-called driving experts who say no 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 you've never hit a horse there well I'm telling you now when you're driving up the country lane in all your show vehicle and your finery you catch that thong and you will in the hedge yeah 
your immediate reaction is to pull it free and as soon as you pull it free that whip thong can land anywhere anywhere on the body so they want to be come on used to it tapped all over I've had loads of people say to me you couldn't let my horse on the quarters well yes you could but you've got to train it to it oh, he's got to know the difference between the instruction and what you know you could term as as an accident you didn't mean to do it but it happens people say to me it's very crude to slap your horses I've seen you do it you know then I've talked some crap slap your horse like this you know tap him on the quarters with a rein well let me tell you that will happen anybody the best driver in the world will do it not intentionally maybe but will do it Eddie 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 baby Eddie that's my darling and that little a truck went past not upset this all not, not terrified or anything like that just went past, a little bit noisy, it was quite close, which is lovely, exactly what I want, it'll happen again. So that's why the horse is here to be trained, to cope with anything like that. That's why people send them, to cope with any eventuality. So what I can do is put them through everything I possibly can, what I've learnt over the years, you know, and training aids that we have, like a scary man and all sorts of stuff like that. Come up, baby. Um, you know, all them type of things so that I can get them used to or accepting um, of what might come along. So we can't... We can... I mean, we've got an airline, for instance. So we'll have an airline... We'll have the horses in the yard and when we pump the tyres up or the airbags on those that have got air suspension, we don't take the horse out of our harness, we leave it there. Sounds just like air brakes. Yeah, sure we do, leave it there. But it's under controlled circumstances, so when you're out on the road and they hear the air brakes go, our airline won't be as loud as the air brakes, but it's the same sound, obviously, it's escaping air, so, you know, it's the same sound and the horse gets to cope with it, you know, quite well we do have uh, quite a bit of equipment that you know obviously just the arena alone all that stuff we have the tunnel the bridge all them sort of things we have fortunate enough to have two or three folds that we can cross uh, or go into the river and come out again well they're wonderful for um that's my baby also, I'm, I'm looking all the time, and while I'm talking to you, trying to learn as much as I possibly can. Come up, babe. Come on. That's my little darling baby child. So I'm watching this horse's reaction to everything, like expansion joints, shadows on the road, um, its own shadow, oh, everything, you know, that it's, it's crossing now, so you've got the... You've got the telegraph poles and the, um, the sunlight shining on them, showing the telegraph poles with the big old cable running along them right up this road. Well, that will be in a different place. Want it later on today, <laughs> that will be gone. So you come down here later today and you won't have them. They won't be there, you know, because obviously the sun comes around and, and moves them, the angle of them. Come on, darling. So this one here, for instance, that we're coming to, that looks like a hole in the road almost, yeah? And when they first go over them, you can see them paying far more attention to them. Right, babe, come on in. Trot. Trot. Come on, baby. Up you go, baby. That's it. Good girl. Good girl. Now, the reason I'll... Come on. Yeah, well, cost. Yeah. All right, my babe. There's a good girl. Yeah, I thought you had. I mean, she scratched her little throat with him. Come on, babe. Oh, mate. That's a little baby. You good girl. Come on. That's my darling. Oh, babe. Now, this house here, the lady looks after dogs. So often you've got foreign dogs there. You know, they don't belong to her. 
and uh, they'll come out and yap and bark. You know, she bulge dogs. Um, so they'll come out and yap and bark and be silly. You know, only where they're calling out to the horse and this is, I live here, you can't come here, that type of thing. That's my baby girl. Yes, you are, you good girl. Come on in. Up, babe, come on. Step on. Also, I'm not... That's it. Go on in, darling. People say that's terrible. You should never canter on the road. Well, there's another myth that wants blowing out the water. Absolutely ridiculous to say that. If you never canter horse on the road, or you never, uh, you never do that. If you've got it, it might be two or three, four or five years you've had the horse. It's only ever trotted on the road. If for any reason it's startled and gets into a canter. I can more or less guarantee 80% of them will bolt or go with you. They say it damages their legs, it hurts their legs. If they're shod properly, you can, you know, if you get a good farrier, he'll, you know, and he knows what the horse is doing, he'll build in a shock absorber into the shoe. You know, into the, leave the foot a bit long, in other words. Next thing, these horses are washed off from the day they come. Every single day, every time they go out, they're washed off so their feet are softened with water every day, um, so they're not dry, they're hooves, so they become more rubbery. Point three is you get people that have got horses in livery or in their own place, and they get up early in the morning, they go and see their horses, and they put their rugs on, and they turn them out. onto frozen rock hard ground that's covered in divots where the horses are torn round in the mud and they turn them out on that and the first thing the horse will do is not every one of them but a lot of them will go out and they'll buck and kick and gallop around with a rug on them you know a couple of rugs on them sometimes um, so why don't they get damaged in you know, why don't they damage their legs? Also, third or fourth point, really, I, I've had two, three horses in my life that I've used as training horses. And the last one I had, he started work when he'd had his third birthday, done light work for the first year. And from the age of four, he worked all the time. And that was my lovely, dear friend and workmate, Roly. You know, it breaks me heart to talk about it now, really, to be honest with you. And it's been a long time. Uh, anyway, he never had a vet. Can't get a vet. Checked twice a year. Just, you know, so I knew he was all right. It's, you know, limbs, wind and eyes and everything like that. And uh, he never had a dentist. I used to put, uh, come on, baby. Come on, darling, up you go. A little bit of sand in his food every three months and he'd wear his teeth himself same as all wood in the wild come on my baby well that's what I believe it worked for me I don't say it worked for everybody people say you can't oh no you must never do that fancy doing a thing like that with your seals in a field he'll eat soil eat it chew it grind it up he'll, he'll uh, sandy soil you know somewhere down like in Devon well, there's a lot of sandstone, the soil sandy, there they are, digging out and actually eating it. So tell me why they do that. People say they're looking for minerals, yeah, okay. I'm not saying they're not, but you know, that's what they do. So, come on, baby. His joints was lovely. And the only reason he finished his days, and I had to have him put to sleep, which makes me very sad, was the fact that he had a growth around his windpipe a melanoma, being a grey horse, he had them under his towel, he had them up, up one under his elbow, as time went on, he was 26 years old, and he'd worked on the road the whole of his life from three year old, so 23 years, he covered more ground than any other horse, I should think, in this country, and I don't mean to, you know, boast or anything like that, and he always had his head up. Anyone that come to my yard and knew him, he was a real character. Um, 
and he done a lot of miles a day. And if he had all up alongside him learning the job, come on, my baby, up you go. Come on, babe. Up. If he had all alongside him learning the job, come on, babe. Um, he would canter every day. His joints were lovely. He was never lame, sick or sorry. And uh, I can't say any more than that. And that weren't only that. That was Bentley, the first grey also I was Bentley. The second one was Rolls, which ended up as Rolo. He loved the Rolo, them chocolate things. Um, so, yeah, it makes me sad to think about it, really. I mean, it really does. It breaks my heart, to be honest with you. Um, he's a lovely, lovely horse, and that's what took him, because he had this growth in his throat, and I spoke to me guy, and he said to me, I said, I don't even attempt to take it out, he said, it's too, you know, around his windpipe, he said, you know, it's, it's just not going to work. So I retired him, what you done, when you put the harness on him, and you put your reins on, as soon as you... You know, he lifted his head up. You could hear him start to breathe funny. And uh, so you'd hear him, you know, he'd be breathing like, you know, you could hear it. It was heartbreaking. I mean, seriously heartbreaking. 23 years, me and old Rowley worked together. Yeah, that was, that was bad. So I had to do what was best for Rowley and he was going to get worse and worse and he'd find it harder and harder to breathe. So when it got to the time when, you know, just walking around, he was making that noise. I put him to sleep myself. Um, oh, I was there with him when it happened. Uh, anyway, that's enough about that, really. Walk on, my darling. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Come on, my baby. Ah, that's my darling. Where'd you come? Yes, you are, you young rascal. So, short trip, big lesson.